Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now, this is going to be one of those build type videos, so if this isn't your thing, please feel free, move on to the next one, I won't be offended. But if you're interested in what we're going to talk about today, then please, please stick around. So I recently made the move from my ultra wide back to triples, and I announced that on my socials, Discord, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Now, a company called raceanywhere.co.uk reached out to me and says, Hi, Dave, we've seen you've gone back to triples. Would you like to try one of our Pro Sim Rig triple monitor stands? So, as you can see, I don't really need a triple monitor stand. I built one myself, but that's, that's a bit like a tank. It's overkill. So, I looked at the product on the website. I liked what I saw. It's competitively priced. So, what we're going to do is we're going to tear all this down and we're going to build up this Pro Sim Rig triple monitor stand. Now, Pro Sim Rig are a Danish company. They're quite a new company. Their background is building antennas and raceanywhere.co.uk, they're a brand new company as well. Now, Martin from Race Anywhere did say to me, look, Dave, we are a brand new company. Uh, here, have this monitor stand. Give us some genuine, honest feedback and let us know if we can improve anywhere. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build it up and we're going to see if there are some areas of improvement, see what I think, see how it compares to this ridiculous monstrosity that I've built where you could literally hang off those monitors. It's that sturdy. So we're going to compare it against that, how easy it is to build, what the instructions are like, and then we'll go from there. So I'll leave links down below to Pro Sim Rig and raceanywhere.co.uk so you can have a look at the products that we're going to be building up today. So I've got my trusty ratchet and I've got a cup of coffee. It's early morning. We better start tearing this down. So there we go. That's it all disassembled apart from the actual stand itself. So I'll just give you a little look at mine. So as you can see, it is overkill. It's uh, pretty thick. Uh, the one that I'm going to be building isn't as thick as that, but it doesn't need to be, to be honest. Uh, this is pretty much all 8040 apart from the top monitor. Anyway, so let's take this apart. So let's have a look in this box now. I'm going to have to be very, very careful here that I don't mark this floor, because if I do, Julie's going to go mental. So I may well have to go and get a rug. Right, so what do we have here? So we have some vase amounts. Two, three... Four vase amounts, right? So it looks like we will have the top monitor stand. So we'll put those down there carefully, he says. So we've got four vase amounts. We've got some vase screws. So get rid of all this packaging that we don't need so we can see what we're doing. So upgrade single to triple light, right? So all the bags are labeled. Upgrade single to triple light, right? Okay. Everything's well packaged, I must say. Some more bolts here, some more Vesa bolts, mounts, screws, T-nuts. What's in here? What's this? Right, so these are some brackets for something. I'm going to have to read the instructions, Anna. I know, you know I said it was really easy, but I can't think what they might be for, but we'll, we'll soon find out. Um, what's in here? Right, so, monitor single stand light. Right, so that's obviously <laughs> to mount the single monitor. Right, okay. I'm going to have to sit down like a right fat knacker, so bear with this because it hurts my knees. I'm getting old, you know, getting old. Right, so, monitor top stand. So that's all what you need for the monitor top stand, obviously, right? Everything's really well labelled, though. Really well labelled. Everything's labelled really well. Right, so these are the angle brackets. Right, so they're quite nice. They're different to what I bought from Matedis, but I like these. I do like those. They're quite nice. So how many of those are there? Are they all the same? So there's four of those, so that's all we need 
for the triple monitors for the side arms. And then we have another two. So that must be for the top monitor. What else do we have any? Do we have any of the smaller packages? God, Julie loves it when I get something new. You know, all this rubbish. She absolutely loves it not. Right. So that looks like it's all the little bits and pieces. So we can start having a look at the profile. Right. Again, I'm going to have to be careful that I don't scratch this floor. I'm trying to get it in the camera shot so you can see what we've got. So, I presume all these are going to be the same length, I'm guessing. Yeah, they're the same length. Profile looks nice, no marks on the profile. Cuts look good. So far so good. So how many bits are in here? Are these all the same? They're all the same. Again, they're perfect. Cuts are good on those. And then there's some more here, or smaller pieces of 8040. I'll have a look to see what that is, but again, good nick, no marks on that. And then we have another piece of 8040. Oh no, it's not 8040, it's uh, two bits of 4040. Uh, 40. Don't say I'm going to have to get a knife. Bear with us, I'll just get a knife. Right, so I've got a knife and a pair of scissors. I'll, I'll try the scissors first, just uh, so I don't score the profile. Jobs are good. Enough. Right, so again, perfect. Perfect, as you would expect. Somebody's not going to send you something that's all marked up. Um, and I'm sure that's the same that they send out to everybody. Not just because it's some bald YouTuber bloke that's having a look at it. But the thing is with now, in this day and age, you can't... You can't supply something that's substandard because people call you out on social media and everywhere. So now you, you can't get away with substandard products now, which is a good thing, which is a good thing. But so far, so good. Everything looks perfect. I'm looking at these all. Little mark on that one, but just a tiny, tiny, tiny mark. It's actually dirt. And again, that one. Good, good, good. Get rid of all this crap. Right, some bigger stuff now. Now this is where I'm dicing with danger here. Let's make sure there's nothing else in that box which there isn't, so that can be gone. And then this is the actual nuts and bolts of the stand here. So, let's open this bad boy up. Don't need that knife. I can't be trusted with a knife. So that's one, that's obviously, is it the cross, no that's, yeah that must be the cross member I presume, that must be the cross beam, but again, that's in good nick, nothing wrong with that, and then these I'm guessing are the legs.
Yep. That one's all good. And this one. Same again. All good. Right, that's what's in the box. We'll just need to try and put it all together now. Right, okay, let's get on with the build. Now, you may think I'm a coward. I have put this nice, fluffy rug in here from the living room. Now, Julie's at work, so she's never going to know that I've got this. She never watches my videos, so she's never going to know, but it'll save me scratching my floor. Right, so I've got the, the pieces out, what we're going to need for the main stand. Okay, two of these. Well, there's, there's different lengths here, so these ones are uh, 600 mil those ones are 500 mil so these are going to be the feet these are going to be for the side monitor monitor arm so we don't need those for the moment so the instructions are okay but they're not perfect uh you know when they have the little stars next to next to a, a, a bit of text and then you've got to look to see what that means um it does that but it's fine it's just that's just me. I'm just getting old and a bit stupid. Um, so we'll just have a look, see what we need to do first of all. So we just need to put this cross beam on, on these legs. Um, what I've noticed is it doesn't come with any feet. Uh, so I have stolen the feet from my other monitor stand. Now these just small rubber feet. Um, just with the T nut on the back uh, that I just put on the bottom of the legs, just protects this floor. So it would have been nice if these were included, uh, but it's not essential, obviously. If if you're on a carpet or if you're on a mat like Julie's rigs on, it doesn't really matter. But for me, going on the laminate floor, I don't really want this aluminium profile scratching the floor. So these would have been nice, but thankfully I've got some of these from my old monitor stand. So we'll use these. Right, so what's first? Right, so we just need to have a look. Sorry, I'm sat down again like a fat knacker, but you'll, you'll have to bear with us. So monitor top stand, monitor single stand light. So this is the bag that we need to assemble all this. Right, what do we get in here? So we have angle brackets, we have plastic covers, and then we have an assortment of T-nuts and bolts, looks like 16 mil bolts, perfect, standard size, they go in there like so. So we're going to need a flat screwdriver to break some of these tabs off I think, um, it did mention in the instructions that we need to break some of these tabs off as you need to with these angle brackets, uh, they only go on one way on the profile. Uh, so if you wanted to have it like that, for example, then you need to break off a couple of little tabs on there, which is dead easy done with the screwdriver. So I'll have to get off my fat backside and go and get a screwdriver now. Right, so I've got a screwdriver just to break these tabs off when I need to. Uh, so what we're going to put on first, uh, well, what does it tell me to put on first? That's what I really should look at is the instructions, but I don't suppose it matters. I need to put the feet on first. Can't really get away from that fact. So we'll get the feet on one at a time. So we need a couple of brackets and then so we'll need four for each one. So two, that's three. There we go. If we need more, we can get them. So these are going to sit on, essentially, like so. So that's going to be your main foot. Now, I'm conscious that I do have a computer that uh, I like to sit behind if I can and mount it off the back just so it's not on the floor. So I don't want them to be too far back, sorry. I don't want them to be too far back so I don't want it to pivot. So I probably want them round about there, I would imagine. Something like that, just to, to, as a bit of a counterbalance, I want it in the middle. So 
we get those on. So the easiest way to do it when you're building these is if you haven't got black, you know, if it's not anodized, if it's just the bare metal, it's easy just to put the T nut on the back of you see that there, just put the T nut on the back and then you can actually just slide it into position. Saves you putting the T nut in, then trying to get it level and square to put the nut in. So if you just put the T nut on, then you can just slide it into position. It's so much better sat on this rug than it is sat on the hard floor. I'm, I'm too old for uh, sitting on a hard floor. But I'm sat cross-legged like a, like a little school child. Probably not the best way of doing this one, actually. That goes in like so. But then this one's going to be a pain, so I'll probably just take one of these T-nuts off and do it the old-fashioned way on the bottom. Can I get that without having to get up? Because I am lazy. Yes, we can. There we go. Probably not the best way of doing this one, actually. That goes in like so, but then this one's going to be a pain, so I'll probably just take one of these T-nuts off and do it the old-fashioned way on the bottom. Can I get that without having to get up? Because I am lazy. Yes, we can. There we go. And then we'll just put the T-nuts in the old-fashioned way, slide that up there to where we can get the nut in. And away we go. So it's probably going to be where I want it, I think. Do I want it maybe a bit further forward? So the, the, the beauty of aluminium profile, you can just move things exactly where you want them. If you're not happy, just move things along a little bit. I'm quite happy with that there. I think that's far enough back. So it's important to nip these ones up first of all. And then we can tighten them down properly. Same with this side. There we go. So that's one. And I'll just put the rubber feet on there as well, actually. Before we go any further. Oh, where's my little Allen key? So these just slide in the bottom. Like I say, it just makes life so much easier for me when I'm moving the rig around if I don't have to worry about scratching the floor. And it saves me getting into some serious trouble from the boss. You know what I'm saying, fellas, don't you? you know, it's just not worth it sometimes. Uh, where's my Allen key? Uh, is that the one? I had a smaller Allen key somewhere. This always happens to me. I always lose my Allen keys. Why do I always lose an Allen key? Where do they where do they go? Where do they vanish to? Where do they go? Every time. Bear with us, I'm gonna have to find this. There it was. It was exactly where I put it. But I just forgot where I put it. So that's one foot on. There we go, that's the other foot on. So now, I can quite happily sit that on the floor. I'll just show you how brave I am. Look at that. Look at that. Even bang it up and down a little bit. But that's what, you, what I needed, really, is some rubber feet. So if, uh, if ProSimRig could add those to it, then uh, that'd be perfect. But that's my only gripe so far. And if that's my only gripe so far, then they're not doing too bad. 
So we'll just pop that there for the moment. And we'll do the same with the other one. I won't bore you with that, but we'll build that up on just exactly the same. Right, so that's the two legs built, but it's really important that they're both symmetrical. Um, what you don't want is one leg being further forward than the other because that may then have a tendency to lean one way, which you'll never get your monitors lined up correctly. So we're just going to measure from the end of the first one that looks where I want it to be to the end, and that's 30 and a half centimetres, just over. And I'll measure that one. That's not a bad guess. So, uh, so that's it, just under 32 centimetres. So we'll just adjust that one a tiny bit. So we'll see what that's like now. That's about right, 30 and a half centimetres, just under. So we can nip this back up now. I'm happy that they're bang on and good enough for me. So we'll just make sure that they are tight now. You don't want any play or movement in the stand. It's not so bad when the stand is uh, separate to your rig, but especially if your monitor stand is attached to your actual sim rig, then it's really important that everything's nice and tight with no play because any movement from your or any vibration from your direct drive wheel is just going to be translated through the monitor stand but it's not not an issue here because it's going to be separate so there we go that's the legs done now it's time for the cross member is that really what it's called do i call it a cross member i don't know so how does this fit on what do we how many do we need so it looks like we need so one top and bottom but then we're gonna have to get out the spirit level because that's another critical part of the build is the spirit level and getting everything just right so we'll get this on now so one quick point before we start building it what you need to do is you need to know how tall your your wheelbase is uh, because you want the monitor stand obviously to sit underneath that so um, I'm going to try and put my wheelbase a little bit further back or the monitor stand a little bit further forward so the top of my Fanatec DD1 there is um, 86 and a half centimeters from the ground bear in mind I've got legs on here as well exactly the same as those so that's 86 and a half centimetres. But we're going to go down a little bit because we're going to bring it all a bit closer. So that's how high we need that to be because the vase amount is going to sit on top of this cross member there. So we need to then adjust it to suit really. So to get your height, you don't really know exactly where you're going to be until you get your monitor on there because you need to measure the, the bottom half of the monitor which is going to sit under there. So let's get this cross member on, then we can start figuring out how high we actually need it. Right, so what we need to do now is put this cross member across there like so, so the monitor will stand on it. now. One thing you need to bear in mind when you're doing this is to make sure that you make it wide enough to go over your rig. Now, I know my rig is 600 mil wide from outside edge to outside edge, but I've got some big ass bolts on the outside. So I need to make it around about 700 mil wide. So I'm gonna put a couple of these angles on here just to hold it so these will just sit on on there and then I can bolt the cross member on the top of those then adjust it ballpark to where I think I might need it and then we can go from there so this doesn't need to be exact at the moment because 
the fine tuning comes when we start putting our first screen on and we're getting our baseline height where we want things to sit. So these can just sit on anywhere really. Well, not anywhere, but roughly where we want them to be. So I'll just tighten that up a tiny bit. Just so it's not going to slide down. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So we'll put one of these in roughly where the other one is. Rather than measure, we'll just sit that next to it so we can we can have a look. Roughly where it's going to be there. We need some of these for the cross beam there. So what we can do is we can put a bolt and a T-nut on, on there like so. We can cheat a little bit and slide the cross member across the top. If you haven't got hands like pigs trotters, then this kind of thing's easy, but I'm not, uh, my fine motor skills aren't the best. But I can lift everything. There we go, finally. Right, so what we can do is we can slide this into here well this is where we need to break the tabs off that's where I have done a massive fail right so I'll explain here a little bit closer actually so on here can you see we have little tabs there and then if we need to adjust the rotation of these angle brackets then we need to break these little tabs off now just with the screwdriver you see that you just sit that you put that in there you just twist it and then it, it breaks off now just as we're doing this I can smell bacon because my good lady is making some uh, nice bacon sandwiches she said to me Dave do you want a bacon sandwich it's like yeah slide it back there we go, essentially, that's where we need to be. So there we've got the basics of the monitor stand. Now, obviously, this is why things need to be tight. So we'll get this tightened up, and away we go. So there we go. If you were just building the main monitor stand, essentially, that's all you need to do. We need to put a bracket on the top there. We haven't done that yet. We'll put that in when... Uh, we get the level where we need it to be. But I haven't put the end caps on, but that's the foundations of the triple monitor mount. And then the arms obviously go off either side. So that's next, getting the level right and then putting the side arms on. Right, so we've got this where we want it. I've put these brackets on the top there. I've just loosely fitted those so we can then adjust it where we need it to be. Now the next job we need to do is put the VESA mount on and get our height with the center monitor. Uh, so we're going to use the um, the T-nuts and bolts that are in this kit which is labeled one piece VESA. So that should be enough to fit the VESA mount on there. So what we'll do now, we'll attach this to the monitor, bring that in and then we'll get this lined up at the correct height to go over our wheel deck. So we've attached the VESA mount to the back of the monitor. Nice fit as you can see. Very very good I'm pleased. Some, sometimes they don't actually fit in the aperture that you've got on the back of the monitor but that fits 
perfectly. So all we need to do now is attach the T nuts. The beauty of a curved monitor, you can place it down like that. So what we need to do now is put the T nuts in the slot. In fact, what we're going to do to cheat a little bit is I'm going to actually remove these. I shouldn't have actually put these on just yet. And I'll show you why, because it'll just make getting the monitor on and off so much easier until we get the, the height that we actually need. Slide those off and then we can put the T nuts directly onto the VESA mount. So as you can see, we've put the T nuts on the back of the monitor there. And that will just then enable us to slide the monitor in and out. Now I'll try and position this in the place where you can see what we're doing, but it's, it's not going to be easy. Just need to get the first one in. Once you've got the first one in, the second one should follow. That doesn't want to know for some reason. I don't know why. Try that again. I think I don't think we're able to slide it in and out because of the actual curvature of the monitor. Is that might that might be the issue, I don't know. I can't see why it would be. But we'll do it a different way. These things are sent to try us. Get my grubby fingerprints all over these monitors. Yeah, so that's actually not it's not gonna sit on there for some reason because of the back of the monitor, which is a worry. Because of the recess in the monitor, we're gonna have to figure this out somehow. Right, so we may have come up with a solution, maybe. So what we've done, we've put some spaces behind there. Now, I don't know if you can see, I happen to have a bag with eight of these plastic spaces in God knows where they're from. Now, I might have some more upstairs. I don't know in a drawer that I, I keep all my stuff. So this might just solve the problem. It's just the, uh, the actual monitor the recess for the VESA mount was just a little bit too deep. Um, so maybe these VESA mounts with the, the hole right through, it may be advisable for it to be some kind of channel so you can adjust it slightly. I think I've got another VESA mount somewhere. Uh, well, I have from my old monitor stand, which are very similar in design. So let's see if this will go in here now that's going in there now still still quite tight though it's not ideal it's spaced out a little bit more but we might not be able to because I don't know if I've got the hardware to be able to do that but we'll We'll, we'll try and work it out. We'll try and problem solve. Yeah, we're not going to get that in. So we're going to have to take that T-nut out. Slide this in on its own. Somehow, there we go, that's better. Just needed to adjust the monitor angle there. So we'll put this teen up back in. And then it should be straightforward enough to get this one on now. He says. And it is, that's going in there just fine. So as long as the the monitor's angled fine, it's should be no problemo. So that's one monitor on. 
So all we need to do is adjust the angle of it now and and see where we need to be. Measure the top of my wheelbase or your wheelbase to make sure that this is exactly where you want to be. And once you've got this one done, then we can start on the side monitors. Right, so what we've done, we have measured how tall my wheel deck is off the floor. Uh, and I've tinkered around with this, had the monitor off two or three times. And when that carpet's not there, it's around about 84 centimeters, which is just enough to get my wheelbase underneath the monitors. Um, so what we can do now is we can button all this up. I've measured it. Sorry, I've put the level on the top of, where's my spirit level? So I've had the spirit level on top of the monitor stand and on top of the monitor there, that is bang on in the middle, dead straight. Uh, these won't be totally straight yet because we haven't got the top brackets on there. But I'm happy with that. All we need to do now is, is get the monitor central in relation to these two. So the same distance, probably going to measure from the back of the VESA mount to this part here and then the same on the other side. Then we know that that's dead center, then that will then give us the perfect place to start mounting the side arms. So we'll do that now, I'll get that centralized, then we're good to go. Right, so now we are at the stage when we can fit the side monitor arms. And these are a piece of, was it 600, uh, 500 mil um, 4040? and two of these angle brackets. Now these are much better than the angle brackets that I have on my triple monitor stand. They, uh, yeah, they're much better. I like them, I like them. We'll explain how they adjust when we put them on the rig. Uh, so all we need to do is get some T-nuts in this profile and away we go. Right, I'll fetch you over here and, and show you how these mount. So it's really easy. So it's just four bolts and T-nuts on the top and bottom, two mounts one on the top, one on the bottom, and essentially it just clamps this in place. So this is the center monitor. And as you can see there, that's your range of adjustment. So you can have it pretty much right out wide and then you can pull it right in. So the angle, I don't know what the angle is, we need to measure it, uh, see what the angle is there. But dead easy, simple. So we just need to get the monitor on and get it lined up and put the other one on the other side obviously but dead straightforward four bolts top and bottom happy days i'll move the camera so you can see exactly what i'm doing so i've got one in already so we just need to line up the second one with the t-nut that's in the slot and there we go that's the monitor on so we can move it up and down, slide it side to side. And then we just need to figure out what angle we want to put it on. We'll probably have to adjust this and move this mount back that way because we're overlapping with the, if you can see that there, we're overlapping with the middle monitor there. So we need to move that up, but we will cover how to adjust your angles in another video. So now we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Um, and then we're good to go. We'll start mounting the top monitor. Right, so there's the monitors on and fitted. Um, I'm really happy with that, to be honest. They fit really nicely. There's no sag on any of them. Give it a good look round. All line up perfectly. Happy days. So it's just the top monitor stand to go on now. <laughs> then we can get racing again. I can't wait. Right, so the triple monitors are all done. We're just going to fit the fourth monitor bracket now. There's not too many bits to it. There's a, a couple of 300mm bits of 4040, a couple of 400mm bits of 4040. There is one piece of 80-20 to go in the middle. And then there's the angle brackets, and then there's some nice big chunky mounting brackets, which I figured out what those were. So let's get on with fitting this. So now we need to make up 
the the top part of the monitor arm now and it's essentially going to be it's going to look like that so we just need a couple of brackets underneath and then we should be able to just slide it into the bottom part of the mount right there we go done and dusted that's the triple monitor stand and the optional fourth monitor there on the top so let's have a look and see what we think well everything lined up perfectly there were no issues whatsoever I've actually managed to get my wheel a bit further underneath the monitor there but yeah everything lined up perfectly fourth monitor stand went on with no dramas these extra supports there are a nice little touch to support the fourth monitor I love these angled brackets there really nice much better than the ones that I have on mine, although essentially they'll do the same thing, but this is a, a nicer design. Uh, Vase mounts are good, no complaints, it's wide enough. Um, absolutely over the moon with that. Pro Sim rig and race anywhere, top job, top job. Although there are a couple of little niggles that will go over now. So I did mention a couple of niggles. It's not much, really. It isn't much I'm picking here to try and find something constructive to, to fire back. Uh, as you can see, it looks great. It's perfect. Um, no complaints at all. Uh, one thing I will mention, though, the um, the Allen, uh, sorry, the yeah, the Allen bolts, the like the button cap ones. If you can see that there, uh, these seem quite. I can't really get it in focus there. Sorry. Uh, these well these actually seem quite soft and a couple of times I nearly rounded these out and if I had then I would have been in deep trouble I wouldn't be able to adjust it was the stanchion on that side so maybe a hardened steel I don't know what these are made of um, but a little bit too soft I'm used to the um, I don't know if I've got any here actually I might have one in this bag this is the type that I usually use and it's obviously a bit more substantial. Uh, but that's the one I normally use. God, my camera won't even focus. That's the one I normally use compared to that one there. This one does the job all right. Does the job fine. Uh, just a little bit soft. So that's the major gripe. The other one's not really a, a gripe or a complaint. Uh, I mentioned it earlier on. It would have been nice to have some rubber feet for the stand itself just because I'm on laminate floor and I don't want to scratch it not everybody is I know and pro sim rig sent me a mat which is actually under this rig here because uh, Julie's rig doesn't have any feet on it so Julie's rig sits on here and it's fine it's no problem mine's not got anything underneath the rig or the stand so some rubber feet would have been nice I bought them online I think they're about a pound each or something like that they weren't expensive and I suppose if you're buying them um, on bulk or in bulk then they'll be much cheaper again but that would have been a nice touch uh, just some rubber feet it's an option if you want to fit them or not that's all um, other than that I've got no complaints at all um, would I buy one of these absolutely like no question uh, I'd buy one of these thankfully I didn't have to and I'm not taking that down again I, I built my triple monitor stand up the other day and I've just had to take it down to build that to show you and let you know what it's like. Absolutely perfect. Um, it's competitively priced. I'll leave links in the description. Please go and check out ProSimRig and RaceAnywhere.co.uk. Thanks to those guys for sending me this. I really appreciate it. Um, it's nice to be able to test new stuff, have a look, see how this compares to the one I made. And to be honest, this is much better. You can tell when something's been designed for purpose rather than some bald bloke designing his own thinking he's Mr. Sim Labs 2.0, which I'm not. So, Pro Sim Rig, triple monitor stand, massive thumbs up.